Okay, uh, we think we've got a scoop here, a story that nobody else has figured out. It starts in Michigan. In the early 1960s, Michigan reworked its constitution a little bit. They had a constitutional convention. Uh, that guy you recognize on the left, that's Mitt Romney's dad, George Romney. He chaired that convention before he became governor of the state. Now, one of the reasons they had this constitutional convention back then, one of the things they thought needed tinkering with in their state constitution was a specific question about when bills that were passed in Michigan would become law. So once something is passed, when does it become effective? This is the language that they settled on. Quote, no act shall take effect until the expiration of 90 days from the end of the session at which it was passed. Okay, that's a really slow process. Uh, that is slow by design. See, the, the, the legislature is in session all year in Michigan, so the legislative session doesn't often end until the end of the calendar year. What this little phrase means is that theoretically a law could pass in January and not take effect until March of the following year, 90 days after the end of that year's legislative session. Michigan has a really slow process on purpose. They did it that way on purpose. Laws taking a long time to take effect allows people who are going to be affected by that law uh, to have time to adjust. It also gives people who don't like that law a chance to start overturning it by a citizen's repeal. Michigan designed that process to be a slow one, clearly and on purpose. It's in their constitution that way for a reason. But. As practical people, they also recognize that sometimes in extenuating circumstances, you need your laws to take effect faster. Something has happened, right? Maybe you've been invaded or you have a flood or an outbreak of disease. Something has happened. There's an emergency that needs responding to right now by state lawmakers. To account for that in Michigan, while most bills do have to wait until the end of the session plus 90 days, so they have to wait that really long time, the Constitution also says this, but the legislature may give immediate effect to acts by a two-thirds vote of the members elected to and serving in each house. So th that means with, with a two-thirds majority vote, a big supermajority vote, you can have your new law go into effect right away, immediately. Otherwise, you wait. You pass it under normal rules, under a majority, you have to wait. If you want it to go into effect, immediately you need a two-thirds vote. That's what they decided back in the 1960s. That's what the state constitution says. Half a century later, uh, in January 2011, a new and hardcore conservative Republican majority took over the state government in Michigan. Republicans control both chambers of the legislature and they have the governorship. They have been passing bills at quite a clip. Uh, the Democrats in Michigan say that since Republicans took over the Michigan House, they have passed 566 bills. Uh, we, look, we, we have looked into that count ourselves. Uh, it does seem accurate and the Republicans are not contesting it. Of those 566 bills, 546, all but 20 of them, were passed under the immediate effect clause. 96% of the bills they've passed have essentially been an emergency. <laughs> Almost everything they've done has been done under this provision of the Constitution that lets you put things into effect immediately because you've got a supermajority. They've been designed to rush from the legislature to Governor Snyder for a quick signature and into full immediate effect that day, that minute, right now. This is new in Michigan governance. This is not the way that Michigan was set up. This is not the way that it was supposed to be. This is, this is like if a cop once waved you around a traffic accident by directing you to drive on the shoulder to get around the crash, and the next day on your commute and every day thereafter, you just drove the whole way to work on the shoulder because you think that's your lane now. Michigan Republicans are using what's supposed to be an emergency provision for everything, even for the most contentious and partisan and divisive things they want to do. Republicans, for example, used uh, immediate effect to take away health benefits for domestic partners of public employees. They jammed it through, Governor Snyder signed it, and then three days before Christmas, aw, it was, hey, gay folks, good luck finding health insurance for your families. We just stripped your benefits on the basis of your sexual orientation. Starting now, starting today, effective immediately, Merry Christmas. Republicans also used immediate effect to set the date and the rules for the 2012 presidential primary in Michigan which did not end up going all that smoothly. Uh, they then used immediate effect to set aside $10 million to pay for that primary, whose rules they had screwed up and rewritten. Uh, Republicans also used immediate effect to stop one of Michigan's most powerful unions from expanding. Now, seriously, this is a fierce union, seriously thuggish. I'll show you, here they are conducting a labor action. Ooh. 
It's the union of Michigan grad students. <laughs> Michigan grad student employees. Here they are staging a grade in, so everybody can see them at work grading papers from the classes that they teach. Are you afraid? Are you are you afraid when you see this? Are you scared of their vicious union thugliness? I think that guy stretched out in the banquette really looks like he's ready to end academe as we know it, right? When these fearsome graduate students asked the state for permission to consider including more grad students in their union, Michigan Republicans went into emergency mode. They used the emergency immediate effect thing to hustle through a bill to block them. They hustled it through last month under immediate effect. So immediate, in fact, that Governor Snyder signed the law against grad students' union rights an hour and a half before the state hearing that could potentially have said yes to what the grad students union wanted to do. And never mind your little democratic process, Republicans are in charge now. Nobody gets a hearing, nobody gets a vote. Grade this. You might recognize the sponsor of the bill to stop the grad students union. He's Representative Al Pasholka, the Republican freshman who represents a town called Benton Harbor in Michigan. In this picture, he is celebrating the signing of another bill he sponsored, the state's revamped emergency manager law. That is the law that we have been covering for a year now. It's the law that lets the state take over your town, overrule anything or anyone you voted for in your local elections. It's the law that says Michigan Republicans, Governor Rick Snyder, can strip democracy from your town if they want to. It's the law that let the state take control of Mr. Pasholka's Benton Harbor. Under this emergency manager law, the state installs a single unelected manager who is free to fire all the elected officials, sell off the town's assets, move to dissolve the town, cancel contracts, almost anything the manager wants to do. This emergency manager person just has unilateral control. In Michigan now, a long list of cities and school boards are being run this way. They're not being run as democracies anymore. They are being run as something much closer to dictatorship. And I realize that's a very inflammatory word, but frankly, that's what it is when you have somebody in charge who has unilateral authority to do whatever he or she wants. That is autocracy. That is dictatorship. As has been their custom since taking over last year, Republicans passed the souped-up emergency manager law, naturally, under immediate effect. They passed it on March 15th last year. The next day, the governor signed it, and it took effect right then, immediate effect. And then less than a month later, Benton Harbor's emergency manager seized all power in Benton Harbor, took power from the town's elected mayor and elected commission. In the span of one month, starting with a bill sponsored by Benton Harbor's own representative, Michigan Republicans routed the democracy of that mostly poor, mostly African-American Michigan town. And they were just getting started. The new emergency Emergency manager law is the reason that Pontiac, Michigan, got its own new boss who joked about himself being the tyrant in Pontiac. And remember the students who got arrested in Detroit last year for protesting the planned closing of the Catherine Ferguson Academy, the school for pregnant girls and young moms? The idea of closing that school was made possible by the new emergency manager law because the state appointed czar for the city's schools didn't have to listen to the elected school board anymore. Democracy didn't matter anymore. Now, those girls did end up saving their school, but just barely. Now, here is, the, here is the crazy thing. This is the thing that we have been digging for since we first got wind of this story uh, last week. It, it is something, it is, it is astounding enough that I almost can't believe it, I have to tell you. My mind almost cannot compute what I am about to tell you, that we reported this out carefully so we can tell you this with confidence. Under the Michigan Constitution, remember, again, you can only make a law take effect immediately uh, if you have a two-thirds majority, if you have a supermajority, Michigan Republicans don't have that. In the House, they don't have a two-thirds majority. In order to get two-thirds on any vote, House Republicans would need the help of almost a dozen Democrats. You need 63 lawmakers on your side before you get the, what the state constitution says you can have if you want that immediate effect, right? You need 73 votes to take effect right away. So for the emergency manager law, for example, Democrats voted against that law in a block. Republicans did pass it with their 62 votes, and 62 votes is enough to pass it, but it's not nearly enough for it to go into effect immediately. But regardless, they just attached immediate effect to it anyway. Look, it's in, it's in the record. Quote, Representative Stamis moved that the bill be given immediate effect. The motion prevailed. Two-thirds of the members serving voted therefore. That did not happen. I do not see how that could be true. Republicans don't have a two-thirds majority, and Democrats all voted against the bill. 
So you're telling me that a dozen Democrats voted against this radical emergency manager takeover law thing, this bill that they hated. Democrats voted against it. And then once it passed anyway over their objections, they decided, oh, well, it passed. I guess I'll vote to put this thing into effect immediately. Seriously? I mean, if you look at the numbers you need for immediate effect in Michigan and the numbers that Republicans actually have, it does not seem possible that the emergency manager law or maybe any of these laws passed in the way Republicans are saying that they did. It didn't happen that way. For the past year, we have been reporting on Republican governance in Michigan. For the past year, we have called emergencies, the, the Michigan's emergency manager law, the most radical Republican legislation in the country. And if that radical, radical law had passed under regular rules, if it hadn't been put into immediate effect, if they couldn't get a two-thirds supermajority to put it into effect that day when Governor Snyder signed it, then that radical law would only just now be taking effect. Now, in 2012, Benton Harbor would only just now be losing its democracy instead of barreling into its second year of having no local voting rights. That would not have happened yet. It appears that it should not have happened. Those pregnant girls wouldn't have been arrested trying to save their school in Detroit. The law would only be going into effect like as of last week. The city of Detroit would not have been in the position of choosing between handing the state oversight of its finances as it did yesterday or facing an involuntary takeover. If you are an African American living in Michigan, there is a 50-50 chance that this year the state of Michigan has considered scrapping your right to vote, scrapping your right to elect local officials to represent you. What Governor Rick Snyder and Michigan Republicans have done is radical beyond radical. And, and if it is true that the law should not have even been in effect all of this time, if it is true that Republicans circumvented democracy in the legislature too, then what do you call that? That's, it's radical beyond radical beyond radical. It's revolutionary even, but not in a romantic way. You could call it bullpucky, and I can tell you now that finally somebody has. Michigan House Democrats have sued the House of Representatives and specifically, they have sued the Republicans in the House of Representatives. The Democrats say that Republicans are denying them the right to vote in the legislature. It's not just for Benton Harbor anymore, it's for the whole state. Democrats have begun demanding roll call votes to see whether Republicans have this two-thirds majority that they claim. They are demanding an actual count to see if they have all 73 votes that the Republicans would need for these laws to go into immediate effect. This is a picture of the Democrats demanding a vote like that last week, demanding it and not getting it. We asked the Michigan Democrats if they could provide us with an example of the way that Republicans are running the House, saying that they've got a two-thirds majority when it seems impossible that they do. And they sent over this clip from last month. Now, what's, this is amazing. What's happening here, the context here, is that Republicans have just passed a measure making it harder to get a repeal on the ballot, to get a citizen's repeal on the ballot. So, as you know, Michigan Democrats want to repeal that emergency manager law, right? Republicans, therefore, are trying to unilaterally change Michigan law to make it harder to repeal it. And naturally, they want that to take effect right away. Watch. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Stamas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move for immediate effect. Speaker, the Majority Floor... The Speaker... Rec the Majority Floor Leader has requested a record roll call vote. All those in favor, please rise. I'm sorry. The Majority Floor Leader has requested immediate effect. All those in favor, please rise. Immediate effect is ordered. Wait, that was the count? I mean, depending on how you time this, the Republican speaker let the voting go on for, I think, three seconds before he gavels in his party's success. What he is purporting to have done then is to count in this giant room, right, at least 73 votes in favor of the motion in a blink, in a snap. One, two, three, 73, like he's a kid speed counting for hide and seek. All those in favor, please rise. Immediate effect is ordered. In that time, do you believe he counted 73 people in favor of that motion in the span of that clip? On Monday, a county judge issued a temporary injunction ordering Michigan House Republicans to follow the law, to follow the Constitution, to let the minority vote, even though the minority are Democrats. The court put on hold several bills that Republicans have passed 
using this kind of technique, passed what appears to be illegally, including that one about the grad students' union. Republicans are appealing the judge's ruling. Uh, their arguments boil down to A, they say no court can interfere with the legislature, and B, they say this is dog bites man. This is standard operating procedure. There's nothing to see here. This is totally normal. Keep moving. This case has implications for what happens in Michigan over the next few months, and to some extent, um, what happens nationwide. Michigan Republicans are now considering a law that would make it much harder to register to vote in the state. If that passes under immediate effect and goes into effect right then, that will become a factor in the 2012 presidential race in, Mich in, Michigan, in Michigan. Also, Michigan lawmakers uh, voting, as you saw, on a bill that makes it harder to get a referendum on the ballot. That could affect the current drive to put the Rick Snyder emergency manager law up for repeal. Do you think that Rick Snyder and his fellow Republicans would like repealing his law to be a harder thing to do? And does anybody else get a say in that? The 2010 elections ushered in a lot of radicalized Republican legislatures and governors all across the country. And they have done a lot of radical things. Scott Walker is nationally famous for a reason. Uh, but what has happened in Michigan, I believe, is the most radical thing that Republicans have done anywhere in the country. They have eliminated democracy. They have eliminated voting rights at the local level in their state. They have tried to eliminate Democrats' voting rights in the state legislature. Whether you're on the left or you're on the right or you're in the center or if you don't particularly care about politics, if all you care about is that we have a form of government in this country called democracy, we vote. If you care about the idea that we still use voting here, we still use democracy, if you care about the Constitution, frankly, Michigan ought to have a flashing red light siren on it right now. Thank you for being with us tonight. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell.